The Clash Detective module checks our model for areas where items interfere or clash with each other. From this module, we will be able to set up rules and options for running clash tests, viewing the results, sorting them, and producing reports. A clash test is a configuration of options, rules, and selections used for checking for these clashes in a model. The clash detection performed by professionals and experts on large projects requires full knowledge of all the options and the terminology. So for more detail on such configuration options and that terminology, please refer to the Autodesk manuals and user guides, since the purpose here is solely to introduce you to the general concepts. Let's navigate to a scene view that displays all model elements that we might check in our clash test. So we'll go to the overall view. In the batch tab of the clash detection window, choose Add to initiate a new test. We'll first perform a clash detection test for interference between the architectural shell and the structural model, two entire models. As we might imagine, we'll probably get a large list of results. In the Select tab, we have these left and right selection boxes. The items selected in each box represent the two sets of items that will be tested against each other. Let's select the items manually from the tree hierarchies, in our case the architectural shell in one and structural model in the other. For the type, we'll select hard in order to detect for intersections of element geometry. On the other hand, a clearance clash type is a clash in which the geometry of two items might not actually intersect, but come within a distance of less than the set tolerance. These tests will also include hard clashes. And lastly, by choosing duplicate type, the test will detect for duplicate geometry. We might use this type of clash test to check a model against itself to ensure the same part has not been drawn or referenced twice. And here the tolerance controls the severity of the clash is reported and gives us the ability to filter out negligible clashes which can be assumed to be worked around on site. As we see in the results window, over 2200 results were detected and here we can go through one by one to inspect them. The results window allows each instance to be inspected more closely in the graphics window. Various display options are available so that the clashing elements can be seen more clearly. We might check select filter to select an item in the main navigation window and show only those clashes that involve the selected item. Auto reveal temporarily hides anything obstructing the clashing items. Auto zoom takes us close into the selected clash while unchecking this box allows us to keep the main viewpoint static while flicking through the clashes. Checking save viewpoint will store the current viewpoint with the result. This allows us to tailor the viewpoint for a clash result such as adding red lines and comments to be stored with the clash result. Dim other turns all other items items not involved in a clash to gray. Checking hide other hides all elements not involved in a clash, thus focusing better on the clashing items. And in that way we have great control over how we inspect these results. Clash Detective will remember the names of clashes throughout the project's life so that we don't have to go through each clash every time we do a test to figure out whether it's a new clash or one we've already reviewed. We could rename a clash, and this name will be saved and remembered for future tests. Clash Detective also allows us to assign a status to a clash, and can then update the status automatically, informing us of the current state of the clashes in the model. To manually change the status of clashes, we can select the new clash requiring the chain and select a new status from the drop-down list.
Multiple clashes can be changed by holding down the control or the shift key while we select other clashes, and then in that way we can change the status of all the currently selected clashes at once. Let's run another test between two smaller sets of model elements, such as the MEP model, against just the wood framing elements in the structural model. From the Select tab, we can refine our clash test by testing smaller sets of items at a time rather than the whole model against itself or even two entire models. Clash testing on smaller sets promises faster and more sensible results than clashing on entire models. In particular, we can use our selection and search sets, which allow us to quickly select groups of objects that are otherwise difficult to access in the selection tree. So we'll first run the clash test by selecting items from the MEP model and the wood framing directly from the selection tree. We know the wood framing is only on levels 2, 3, and 4, so we can select those in this box. And in the other, we'll choose the HVAC model. This test configuration generates 53 clashes, and as we view the results, mostly are between joists and ducts. An even easier way would be to run that same test, but by choosing the wood framing selection set from the sets tab, instead of from the selection tree. And of course, we get the same 53 results. And lastly, we can produce reports, either as text files or in HTML or XML formats, and even viewpoints. Now let's try running a clearance test between the sprinklers and the lighting fixtures in the corridor. 